I'm Panina Taylor. Welcome to Hold That Thought, the podcast where we talk about, well, what makes us tick. I believe that it's only when we understand why we do the things that we do that we can become our real selves and show up in the world as the person we were created to be. Imagine living a life where you weren't afraid that the other shoe was about to drop. Imagine living a life where you weren't living in constant fear that someone might find out who you really are inside. The you that you work so hard to pretend you aren't, but you really believe you are. Imagine living a life where you are powerful and successful because you are comfortable in your own skin and are confident that you can navigate whatever may come your way today. Imagine a life where you are completely in control of what you believe, what you think, how you feel, what you do, and the life you live. Well, that life begins now. Well, hello there. I'm Panina Taylor, and I'm so glad that you've joined me for this episode of Hold That Thought. Today, I have a really special guest. Her name is Dr. Azriela Jankovic, and there are few people on this planet that I resonate so well with. And I have to say that if there's one person who's pretty much guaranteed to put a smile on my face, on your face, it's Ozzy. (laughs) Dr. Azriela Jankovic is an educator, speaker, mastermind facilitator, (laughs) mastermind facilitator and self-coaching advocate, and she empowers people to move past self-doubt and to actualize the potential within. Sounds good to me. She hosts something called the Within Us podcast, a show dedicated to sharing transformational tools for mind, body, and spirit. And she's also the author of a book called Beyond All Things, Insights to Awaken Joy, Purpose, and Spiritual Connection. Azriella's tools and insights have been curated over the course of her own mental health journey, which I have a feeling we're going to talk a little bit about today. And she speaks about that in order to educate and erase stigmas. Now, in 2015, Azriella moved from California to a small community in central Israel, where she gratefully resides with her husband and four children. Azriella, welcome. Pina, thank you so much for having me. It is really a pleasure to connect with you, always. Always, always, definitely. And I think it's going to be a real pleasure for our audience as well. Um, Ozzy, your book is, uh, sorry, your podcast is called Within Us. Why did you, why did you call it that? You know, it's, it's interesting. When I first started the podcast, I felt like I was on a mission to share the awe and the wonder of spirituality with the world. And the initial name was Within All Things. Okay. And as time went on and I started interviewing people and I started meeting more of my listeners and more, more of the audience, I realized, you know, I really want to focus on how this light, this spark is within each and every person. Mm-hmm. And what does that look like? And how is that uniquely expressed within each person? Because when initially I, I, I felt this real calling to teach the world about spirituality, what I came to understand is that we don't want to learn about spirituality. We want to live it. Right. We want to experience it. Yeah. Okay. So that was the impetus for the name. And lo and behold, I think I'm adding another word to it to call it light within us because... Yeah. Because it's been almost a year since the show launched, and uh, and that's really the direction that it's gone in to highlight this unique light, which within each one of my guests and within each one of our listeners as well. Yeah, it's interesting how things, how we really do grow and progress over time, and things change, and that's okay. I remember pulling up uh, my course that I created that I haven't given now since we've been in lockdown for so long. Um, But I pulled out my course and I realized that there were things that I wanted to change because even in the past year, the way that I see certain things, the way that I teach certain things, I have additional insight on them. And so, yeah, I mean, we're always growing, always moving, always changing, hopefully towards the light, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The the word in, in Hebrew is called teshuvah, which is return. And so much of our lives, I believe, is about unlearning and returning to who we really are inside. Very, very true. Yeah. 
Well, so, me- you know, it's interesting that you mentioned your course, Panina. Last night, I decided to open up a calendar because the Hebrew year just finished. We started a new year and I decided to open up the calendar. And this is something that everyone can do. Open up your calendar and just look at what were you doing one year ago? Where were you? What was your day like? And what's changed? What have you learned in this year? And I can guarantee that everyone listening is going to have a takeaway from that. Because we're always evolving. It's so, so true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, definitely. And I mean, hopefully, you know, we're always moving. This is one of the things that I talk so much about, how the entire world is in motion. And uh, we are moving one direction or another, right? So we're either growing, moving towards the light, moving towards a um, higher vibrational frequency or towards, you know, expansiveness or or we're moving the other direction. There is no such thing. It's so true. It's so true. We're, We're always changing. We're always growing. Someone asked me recently about my title. I call myself a facilitator of transformations. And she says, well, what if I don't want to be transforming? And I said, well, listen, you're transforming whether it's conscious or subconscious. Right. We're always transforming. The question is, are we driving that from a conscious level or is it just happening to us? Right, right. Yeah, we're always becoming that butterfly, right? Absolutely. Definitely. So let me ask you a question. Um, You have recently come out and shared very openly about your own mental health journey. What was it that kind of prompted you to do that? Oh my goodness, Panina, I can take you back to the exact moment, okay? (sighs) Last December, I was on a walk. And I had, I had recently published my book. It was, it was in sept- October that I published the book. And then I started speaking on my podcast. And I had received a question at a book fair, my very first book fair. One of the women who came to my booth, who was interested in my book, she stopped and asked me what my book was about. And when I told her it was about all these insights to awaken joy and purpose and connection, she said, that's so nice, but like, what's your story? <laughs> And I'll always remember that because it was this bold realization that, of course, I can share all of this amazing wisdom with the world that I've collected over the course of my journey, but it means so much more when I bring my own story into it. Well, I mean, your story is part of the reason, right? A hundred percent. It is the reason. And so I, I had it in my mind. And a few days later, I was taking a walk. It was in, it was in December. And I received a text message from my friend, um, one of my fr- friends and neighbors, telling me that unfortunately a very young, wonderful, lovely, bright, beautiful teenage girl, local 17 year old, Mm. unfortunately succumbed to suicide Mm. the day before. And the message was a note from her father, from this young woman's father talking about what happened. And I learned that unfortunately she succumbed to suicide um, in the same hospital, the same psychiatric hospital where I was an inpatient. Okay. Two years earlier. Wow. And I stopped in my tracks the second I got this message. And I remember where I was. I was standing in my neighborhood. I was looking out over the beautiful, the gorgeous Ayalon Valley and just in absolute shock and awe that a a 17 year old young woman with her whole life in front of her succumbed to mental illness in such a tragic way. And at that moment, I, I thought to myself, you know, if there had, if there were a way, if there were any way that I could just shout from the rooftops, share with her, share with anyone who's struggling, that there is hope for you. You can feel like you are at the bottom of your life at the absolute most difficult, painful time. Like there's no light and there's no hope, but I believe there is. I believe there always is. And, and I, I only say that because I've experienced really, really serious mental illness mm. and it's, it's nothing new to me. It's something that started when I was, you know, in my early teens dealing with serious depression. I dealt with all sorts of other challenges. I've been in five different mental institutions, for inpatient treatment, I've been to outpatient treatment, I've seen psychiatrists, psychologists, every kind of healer, every kind of doctor. And fortunately, I'm in a really, really good place right now. And you know, that being said, I don't feel like I am, 
um, I don't feel like I'm immune to these issues. I don't feel like I'm immune to setbacks or challenges. I believe that mental health, brain health is something that we need to actively work on sustaining. I was right before I hopped on the, the, the call with you, I was on iHerb or uh, ordering my really super strong probiotics. And there are these concrete actions that I take on a daily basis to maintain well-being. It's not something that I just stumbled into. And so that morning, Panina, when I got that message, I, I got my own message, you know, which was like, you got to start talking because ultimately we are here for a finite amount of time. Sure. We are here for a finite amount of time and everything, I believe everything that you've gone through, every challenge you've had, every setback, every quote unquote failure, success, all of it is teachable. And all of it is part of your message and your work and what you can uniquely share with this world and how you can help people. Wow. So that was it for me. Wow. I think you touched on two really, really, really important points that I'd like to get back to. And the one is a lot of people, you know, we've got all of these gurus and these coaches and these people who are out there and they're talking about transformation as if it's a one and done deal as if you're going to come to my program, I'm going to fix what's wrong with you. And then you're going to go out there and you're going to be perfect, just like me. And I think really they're selling us a bill of goods and it's very, very dangerous because then what happens is people, they have a breakthrough and it's amazing. And they have this fantastic shift. And then as time goes on, they have the same things come up again. Maybe they have more tools to deal with them, but they start to wonder what's wrong with me that I keep having to deal with this same issue over and over and over again, even though I thought I had a breakthrough. I thought I had transformation. And it's what I call, and I was talking with Hannah Mason about this, and, and actually I'm hoping to get out a little ebook about this. I call it the whack-a-mole process. And, you know, it's like if you've ever been to an uh, amusement park or an um, arcade, they have this game that it's like a flat table with these holes in it, right? And inside each hole is a plastic rodent, <laughs> you know, like a, mo they, it's a, a mole, they call it. It's such a fun game. I know exactly right? the game we're talking about. So you have this rubber mallet and these moles, they pop up at random intervals. And the idea is, is that you have to whack the mole and you have to kind of anticipate which one's going to come up next and you have and you get points for each mole that you whack of course the thing is is that once you whack that mole it goes down for a little while but then it comes back up again and so you never know where it's going to come from you don't know what order it's going to happen in and you're going to see the same mole over and over and over again you're not broken and this is such an important message to get out that transformation is an ongoing process. I have a meme that I posted on Facebook, maintain your transformation. Mm. Just like you were saying, it's something that you have to work on for the rest of your life. Coaches will give you the tools that you need to deal with it in a healthy way so that when it does pop up, you say, oh, I've seen that before. I know what I need to do here. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to show up, especially if it's a core belief. You know, the superficial ones that came on later that happened because of something that we saw or, or experienced as an adult that wasn't super traumatic and super deep. Yeah, we can get rid of those and sometimes we can get rid of them forever. We deal with that. But those things that came to us when we were children that were part of our forming, our beliefs, our core beliefs about ourselves, our identity, those are things that we're going to have to deal with the rest of our lives. And we just need someone there to give us the tools to deal with it in a healthy way. So um, I think it's, that was a really, really important point that you made. Yeah, I love the analogy of whack-a-mole. And I think if we can remember that we're engaged in this challenge and, and that if we embrace the challenge, we can have a meaningful life. It's only when we seek ease that life becomes difficult. Right. Wow. That's profound. When we seek so, ease is when life becomes difficult. Yeah. But if we seek challenges, like we're here to grow, we're here to work. And if we can embrace the challenges, we can really make some headway. 
And so I love what you said, Panina, about the fact that there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. I think everyone wonders on a core level, and I learned this from Tara Brock, who's a psychologist, meditation teacher. She talks about this idea that everyone wonders on some core level, like, what is wrong with me? Right. What is wrong with me? And this feeling of separateness and this feeling of being alone and this feeling of like some inner deficiency can really dictate our lives and put us into what she calls the trance of unworthiness, mm. making us believe that we're unworthy. But what's so beautiful, what I love so much about learning about these tools and especially learning about them in a group setting and being with other people who are working um, in similar capacities is that these really deep inner issues Issues, these are the issues that comprise our human experience. Right. Right. And so the moment we can wake up to the fact that, okay, of course I'm afraid of rejection because on a very primal level, rejection means being cut off from the community and rejection means death. Right. And so there's nothing wrong with me that I want people to like me. There's nothing wrong with me that I want to be accepted. This is actually my more primitive brain trying to keep me alive right right that's all it is yeah and of course we could go oh my gosh there's so much in there so much but one of the things that i want to get back to you touched on it again here and you touched on it the first time you were talking and that is that all of these things work together to make us who we need to be in order to do what we were put on this earth to do when I look back, and my journey is one more of abuse than actual mental illness, but you know, of course, there's a lot of crossover there as far as the the core beliefs and the things that I have to deal with. And there were times when I, especially when I started this journey of being a uh, back then we called it a counselor, not a coach, but um, you know, I I started to say like, why? Why did I have to go through all of this? Mm -hmm. But then when I got an email a few years ago from also a girl in her late teens who I had spoken to, I had spoken to her school and she heard, I only mentioned one line about having been abused and she came up to me afterwards and said, can we email? And we talked back mm -hmm. and forth and she shared her situation and I was there for her. And years later, she emails me back and she says, I just want you to know that you saved my life. And at that moment, I saw everything that I had been through come to this head. And this is the why. This is the why, because God knew that I could make it through this, come out a stronger person on the other end and help as like a tour guide to help others come through for them mm. to see that you can live a healthy and a whole life even on the other side of abuse or in your case mental illness that you've dealt with you know it's easy for somebody to come through that and say or not come through it you know to be struggling in the middle of it and say how can i ever live a healthy normal life and we're here to say look you can we've been through. absolutely panina i want to acknowledge you for that story i mean it's just so incredible you are changing you are changing lives you're saving lives and you're doing it with your courage you're doing it with your courage and you know i believe that there is a light on the other side i believe you can have a healthy life a productive life i i believe firmly that you can go through these deep dark depths and come out and have an even more amazing life you're proof of that. I guess both of us are, you know, it's uh, amazing. Thank God. It's Thank amazing. God. But yeah, so that, but that's an important point for people to understand. Every challenge that we've been given, it's, it's interesting because this, this uh, podcast is not specifically aimed towards Jewish people, but there is um, something that we can all learn from the Jewish prayers. Every morning there is a prayer that we say first thing when we get up in the morning and it's basically a, an uh, acknowledgement of gratitude for being given another day and um we say you know that that great is his faith in me right i've been given another day because the creator of the universe believes that I'm going to accomplish something great in this day. And then we have this other prayer that says, who has made me according to his will. And what that means is that everything that we have, 
the flaws, the challenges, um, my weight issues, my, our mental health issues, whatever they may be, all of these challenges that we have, all of these things that we don't like about ourselves often, and of course, we're our own biggest critic, of course, but they all are gifts that we've been given to make us into, to equip us with what we need in order to fulfill our job here on earth. And I think it's so important for us to realize that even these horrible things that have happened to us are gifts and have a really good purpose. Mm. You know, I really, really love, uh, I believe Tony Robbins uh, originated this phrase, but everybody is saying it now that life happens for us, not to us. And yes. it's so, so important for us to remember that these things, everything that happens is an opportunity for us to grow. Yeah, I agree with you so much. It's, it's definitely not uh, always a straight line. No, of course not. We're discovering that it. and it's not, it's not always easy. So I, I think that like, I, I want to be really careful about communicating that, that, that my getting better and my coming to this place of peace was a really long process. Yeah. And sometimes it is. Yeah. But that's why, I guess that's why, um, we are given guides along the way to help us through it because of the fact absolutely. that it's such a long trip. I, I absolutely. I think it's such an amazing exercise. It can be so useful for anyone listening really to sit down in any moment and, and recognize what it is, what has happened in your life. Who have you met? Who have you bumped into? Who has helped you? What has sustained you? What's gotten to you to this place, wherever you are, you're alive right now. Right. Right. And chances are you've accomplished something in your life, okay? If you've smiled at one of your neighbors, if you've done any act of kindness, that is incredibly huge. It has infinite value. And I think that if we can pause and look at our lives and look at all the people who have helped you, mm. anyone who's helped you, if a, said a kind word to you, yeah. or maybe the encouragement from a stranger, or even something that challenged you that helped you grow, and, and really get present with that. I think that everyone listening is going to find a lot of grace. Yeah. Wow. Powerful, powerful words. So you talk a lot about compassion and having compassion, self-compassion. Yes. Do you think that we're too, we're too hard on ourselves, huh? Self-compassion. It's so interesting. You know, I, I, I know that my biggest, biggest setback, biggest challenge has been me mm -hmm. over the course of my life, having absolutely unrealistic standards for myself, having this idea of perfection that I, I made up from a composite of every person that's uber successful in every field and put them all together and then held myself up to that standard. Right. And what I've come to understand is that I'm not the only person that does this, fortunately. And it's not a real person. <laughs> it's not a real person. Right. And you know, it's so interesting because there is an idea that in, it's a, in the Jewish text that one of the things that takes us out of this world is jealousy. Mm. Okay. And what does it mean to be jealous? Now, if we're going to get, you know, into like more modern sort of social science research, we can talk about someone like Brene Brown, who says that anytime we're out of our own business, anytime we're thinking about, you know, what's happening with another person, we're really out of our lane. Mm. And I think it's the same idea that, that jealousy, that, that holding ourselves to a standard that someone else is apparently living on the outside is really bringing ourselves out of our own experience. It's stepping out of where we are now, stepping out of this moment of presence where I'm sitting here, I'm having a conversation with Panina. You're listening to a podcast, you're driving in your car. Where are you right now? And the second I start thinking about someone outside of myself or some moment in the future or some regret from the past, I am no longer able to operate here and now to be present with the person sitting in front of me, the situation sitting in front of me, and being my best self in this moment, being available in this moment, being useful in this moment. Right. And I think that one of the most incredible things we can do is be here now because of that. And yet 
in the process of learning how to be here now, we're going to confront up mm -hmm. close and personal all of our thoughts and our beliefs. What is a belief? A belief is a thought that we've come to accept as true. Right. And I would venture to bet that for everyone listening, if you were going to sit down right now with a blank piece of paper and allow yourself to transcribe your thoughts, allow your thoughts to flow out on paper, all of them, don't make any judgments. Nobody's ever going to see this paper, write them all down. I would imagine that you're going to come up close and personal with an inner critic that is more critical than any person you would ever stand mm -hmm. in real life. Mm -hmm. We would, none of us would have patience for nope. that kind of negativity from anyone. We would run the other direction. And we would never do it to another person. We would never do it to another person. So why do we do it to ourselves? And I think that understanding the science, for whatever reason, it's really set me free from this whole experience, mm. both the science and the spirituality. So from, from a scientific perspective, we have come from a long line of ancestors who have survived. And in order to survive, they needed to be in a mode of self-protection right. all the time. Right. Now, in order to self-protect, we, we have all kinds of mechanisms that we use to self-protect. Sometimes we hide and we keep ourselves silent. Other times we become overly productive or overly perfectionistic or overly hard on ourselves because that is the survival mechanism that we've learned. But in any case, in order to make peace with it, in order to come to terms with like, what is this voice in my mind? And how can I learn to operate in a way that is truly going to be for me, in spite of whatever that noise is. I believe we, we need to come, to come to know it, to get to know it, listen to it, hear it out, hear what it has to say, as though it's a guest arriving on our front doorstep. Invite it in, hear it out, and, and then proceed. It's like I talk and about looking the bear in the eye. Looking invite it in. in. in invite it in. And listen to it, you know, in, in, in doses, obviously, if it's a really ruthless bear, you, you might want to do it in, in, in short stints. But I think what's so valuable about this experience is realizing that that self-preservation is apparent in all of us. It exists in all of us. And so having the self-compassion, this is, this is enter self-compassion, it's learning how to be kind to myself, learning how to acknowledge those voices, and then waking up that small still kind part of yourself that has so much more to add to that script it's another guest that we can welcome into our home that's mm -hmm. going to feel like the biggest hug and the biggest embrace of all of us and ironically it's that hug that embrace and that kindness and compassion that's actually going to propel us forward it's not the bear right right Absolutely. And, you know, when you look at that bear in the eye, sometimes you realize it's not actually a bear at all. Mm, I love that. Um, okay. Uh, as you know, we're kind of getting towards the end of this podcast. Obviously, we have to do more of these together, but tell us a little bit about your book. Your book is called Within Us. So my book is called Beyond All Things. Beyond All Things. And it came out a little over a year ago. It's right here. Beyond All Things, Insights to Awaken, Joy, Purpose, and Spiritual Connection. And it's really like a sweet, short read. It's 50 different insights, and you can literally open to any page and read an insight that is comprised of spiritual wisdom, research from the 21st century, all sort of laid out as a buffet for you. I was to, say, would that work well for your morning kind of positive meditation? A hundred percent. You can open to any page. You can read the insight. And then there's a question called the grow your insight question at the end of each insight. And you can use them anytime in your life. I keep a book next to me. Sometimes I just open to a random page. Mm, very nice. Okay. And that can be gotten on Amazon. The book is, is on Amazon. Everything's on my website, drozzy.co. So the book is there. I have a journal there. It's like Very a self-compassion, growing kindness journal. Mm. And yeah, it's all in one place. Okay. And that's D-R-A-Z-I. Dot C-O. Dot C-O. Dr. Ozzy.co. 
cool. And what else are you doing? You're running mastermind groups for women, meditation groups. Tell us a little bit about the other things that you're doing. Yeah. So I've done a lot of different things over the past year. And as soon as this COVID hit, I realized that all of the meditations that I love to share with the world and all of the transformational tools and all of the coaching can be really gathered into one place. And so I worked on creating a 12 week program. I call the program mastery and it's a program specifically for women who are looking to move forward in their lives. It can be in business. It can be at work if you're not an entrepreneur and it can also be in your personal life. It can be moving forward in some emotional way or in, in your relationships. It can really be anything. And we meet every week and we go through this program and it's really a personalized, individualized program so that when you come in, you're going to learn the theory behind you know, the psychology of growth and change, the psychology of learning, the psychology of personal development. And you're also going to be able to apply the theory to whatever you're going through in this very moment. So my current program just started last week and it's full. I have 20 wonderful women and I feel so grateful to, to be there experiencing it with them. And there are going to be more in the coming, in the coming months. Amazing. So, amazing. so yeah. is all of that available? Is all that information available on your website? Everything's available on the website and you can actually get on the wait list for the future programs by visiting my website. Okay. All right. So everybody go to drazi.co, not .com, .co, yeah. and you can get all of this information and lots of resources to help you move towards the light, to gain clarity, mental health, all of those wonderful, amazing things, and maybe even work with, um, with Azriella because she's an amazing coach. Oh, so sweet. Banana. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. It's just always a delight. And I'm so excited to have you on the show. And I look forward to future collaborations together. Um, all right. Me too. All right. So be well. And thank you so much. Thanks, Benina. You've been listening to Hold That Thought. I'm Panina Taylor, and I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at panina at paninataylor.com. And before I sign off, I'd just like to remind you to please subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to so that you never miss an episode. And if you'd like to see even more incredibly uplifting posts on mindset and living an awesome life, follow me. I'm Panina Taylor on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I like to make it hard for people to find me. But seriously, follow, subscribe, and don't forget to hold that thought.